Hello friends, this is Will Davis Jr. with Good News Today. I pray you're doing really, really well. Happy Memorial Day to you guys and shout out to my friend Galinda Schmidt, ACFer. Thanks for being part of the Good News Today audience. Send cards, comments, complaints, criticisms, cash, and questions to seniorpastor at acfellowship.org. So some of you asked me about this flag that usually sits back there on my lampstand. This flag uh, was on my dad's casket in December uh, whenever he passed away, 15, 16. Um, and I'm very proud of it. I was on his casket. We also have a flag very similar to that that we fly at our cabin in Colorado that actually flew above the state cemetery uh, here in Texas above on the day of my dad's funeral that they gave us as well. So we have two flags. We are very happy to show and be proud of for Texas and for my dad, especially in Colorado. So that's what that is about. Okay, so we're talking about subduing the earth today on Memorial Day. Everybody go, hmm. Genesis 128, God blessed them, Adam and Eve, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Okay, remember, God did not tell the animals to fill the earth. He told the birds to fill the heavens and the fish to fill the seas, but he did not tell the animals to fill the earth because that was reserved for humans. We share the continents with living beings, species, animals, but they were not supposed to fill the earth because we are the primary uh, caretakers and the, the number one species on the land masses. And so what God tells us to fill the earth, curious, why did he say subdue it? There's no sin yet. There's no chaos. There's no curse. The word subdue is a very strong military term. It, it is a, it's a, to lay siege to, to attack, to bring under submission, to bring under bondage and to control. And it, it implies this hostility between humans and the rest of the, of the planet, but that hostility did not exist. It came in Genesis 3. So why did God say subdue it? Well, it, there's two schools of thought. It may be that God had left the region outside of Eden undeveloped and that the plan was as Adam and Eve procreated and humans grew and multiplied, they were to take their Eden with them and push Eden out and to, to take, so to speak, the kingdom out into the rest of the planet through reproduction. And, and as humans went out under the favor of God without sin, so Eden would go with them. And that's what it meant to subdue and to bring the rest of the earth under the control that was there in Eden, the kingdom-like domain in Eden. Sin obviously changed all that in Genesis 3. The obvious other school of thought is that the word simply means to master. Master the planet, and, and that in the specific sense of understanding it. God has given us an incredibly rich ball in the world of space to live in. Nutrients and, and minerals and so much that we've been able to use to make life better for people, even in Genesis 3. And we still don't understand it fully. Uh, this was the, the, the thing which produced the modern science movement was the, the, the Christian's understanding that the globe was a gift and we needed to figure it out and master it and, have, and honor it as God's gift to us. And that's what led to science. So it may just be that the, the word subdue means understand the planet, understand the globe and use it, use it for the, the, as the resource I have given you. So either way, is an interesting translation. I tend to think it, it means more. I'm not sure what I think, so I'm not going to put my head out there yet. I don't know. But don't miss... Don't miss the New Testament connection of this, that we as the church live under the protective Eden-like existence of the kingdom of God. Not problem-free, but prevailing over problems through Christ and through prayer and through faith. And we are, as we, are, as we multiply, as we procreate through prayer and apologetics and evangelism and discipleship, we are to take the Eden-like existence of the kingdom into the darkness that is around us. We are surrounded by darkness on the planet. And our role as Christians is to fill the earth and to subdue it, not in a military aggressive way, in a kingdom loving way, as we transform the darkness around us into light through the expansion of the kingdom into people's lives, through missions, through prayer, through evangelism, etc. How good is that? The, the be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it applies today to the church. 
Lord, we love you. Thank you for these intri intriguing and interesting words from Genesis chapter 1. Help us indeed to take the gospel to all the nations. We pray this in your name. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow.